prices are about to shoot up even higher in the next 60 days, according to industry executives who run the nation's food supply chain. Of course, food prices always fluctuate, but what Americans are about to see at the stores in the next couple of months is going to be quite shocking, they say. Thanks to endless supply chain issues, an ongoing bird flu outbreak, transportation delays, and a growing consumer demand, aggressive price increases are being announced as our grocery stores continue to have a tough time staying stocked. Meanwhile, Shoppers continue to worry about shortages, and they seem more motivated to stock up on essentials before the situation worsens. Even after two years into the pandemic, stockpiling food is a trend that has never disappeared. But there are accusations that some people are actually hoarding. However, analysts say grocers haven't seen the worst of this wave just yet. The truth is that when more and more Americans begin to wake up to the fact that empty shelves and food scarcity are not just temporary problems, the real hoarding will begin. That's what we're going to expose today. Before moving on, please support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. In its latest update to its Food Price Outlook report, the USDA found that all food categories are expected to go up in price next month. And yes, those increases will come that's on top of the price hike consumers have already been forced to endure over the past 12 months. All food prices are now predicted to increase between 4.5 and 5.5 percent, the USDA's Economic Research Service explained in its forecast report for October, and even though the overall increase already looks alarmingly high, shoppers will see even higher increases across various food categories, including beef and veal, expected to jump 16.2%, poultry, 12.5%, fish and seafood, 10.4%, eggs, another 11.4%. Fats and oils, 11.7%. Fresh fruits will go up by 10.6%, while processed fruits and vegetables are about to increase 7.6%. And cereals and bakery products are expected to face a 7.8% jump. But according to the food industry executive and billionaire supermarket owner, John Katsimatidis, the outlook for the next 60 days is even more disturbing. During a recent interview, the expert said that overall food prices are gonna hit the double digit mark. I see over 10% price increases in the next 60 days, he told Fox Business, adding that the trend will not drop any time soon. Katsimatidis cited rising inflation and supply chain bottlenecks that are currently plaguing supermarkets and other retailers across the nation. The expert then warned, I see food prices going up tremendously because food company CEOs want to be ahead of the curve and the way they're doing it is that they're rolling back promotions and replacing with low moving items. A 10% increase in a span of just 60 days would put the U.S. food inflation rate at an overwhelming 60% on an annual basis. Although Katsimatidis' projection seems pretty extreme, he is one of the top executives of the nation's food supply chain, and he is in a position to know the trends. That's why we should all take his ominous warning very seriously. Meanwhile, another industry executive that was interviewed by Bloomberg said that right now he's seeing people rush to stockpile everything, from canned goods to boxed items, and even making a run on milk when it's available in grocery stores. People are hoarding, said CEO and founder of Saffron Road, Adnan Durrani. What I think you'll see over the next six months, all prices will go higher. Saffron Road is a producer of frozen and shelf-stable meals. The company is now holding extra inventory and trying to keep about four months of supply on hand 
instead of the typical one or two months because many suppliers are telling them that transportation disruptions and shortages are going to last. The change in consumer behavior has also been registered by the U.S. Census Department, which recently reported that the combined spending on food supplies reached an all-time high of $139.2 billion this month. That's a sizable 25.7% increase compared to a year prior. An in-depth report published by the Wall Street Journal shows that food sales at wholesale retailers like Costco and Sam's Club are up 26.6% and 18% respectively, compared to the same period a year ago, and that's far outpacing all other retail categories. On top of that, IRI's Weekly Consumer Packaged Goods Supply Index, which is a standard metric for tracking weekly changes in the in-stock rates of food products, showed a total stock rate of 68%, which is the lowest reading of the year so far. It was down 18 percentage points from just a month earlier. Specifically, the overall reading for food and beverage categories was at 71%, that's down 14 points from a month ago. Those figures compare with stock levels of 93% to 95% pre-pandemic, according to IRI. The growing consumer demand was also the highlight of a new Bloomberg survey that found that only one-third of consumers say they will continue to buy the same number of grocery items each week as they did throughout the first three quarters of the year. On the flip side, a poll of Kroger customers found that 92% of shoppers plan to buy a higher volume of food supplies ahead of the winter, despite the expensive prices. Kroger CEO Rodney McMullen said on a recent analyst call, it's also likely that some consumers are scarred by another year of shortages and are still stocking their pantries and freezers with food, he added, noting that spending is high. Food is flying off the shelves. That has helped to drive up prices. At the moment, several parts of the United States are still battling food shortages, while worried Americans continue to empty supermarket shelves. The CEO of Albertsons, Vivek Sankara, revealed that customers should expect that they are going to have something missing in our stores on any given day. I never imagined that we'd be here still talking about supply chain problems, but it's a reality," Sankara said. In Chicago, Dill Pickle Food Co-op is facing stockouts of certain dry goods because two of its main suppliers haven't sent full orders this entire month. In Denver, shoppers are also struggling to find milk due to broken parts at the regional supplies plant. But executives with Land Lakes, one of the biggest farm cooperatives in the country, said they're producing plenty of milk, but transportation problems have led to problems getting milk to people. The challenges in the supply chain continue to be issues such as driver shortages, labor, and congestion at the ports, Land Lakes Chief Supply Officer Yoon Jubri explained. Bloomberg also reported there have been snags in the production and distribution of cereals, tortillas, and several other corn-based products which have kept those products off the shelves. All of these bottlenecks are leaving parents and local schools scrambling to get supplies for students' lunches. We've been struggling with supply chain issues with different items since school started. Teresa Hafner, the executive director of food services at Denver Public Schools, told the outlet, It just continues to pop up. It's like playing whack-a-mole. Retailers and producers all along the supply chain continue hiking prices to pass higher costs along to consumers. Grocery prices are up 12% compared with a year ago, according to the most recent Consumer Price Index. And the coming increases are going to be extremely painful for millions of financially distressed families. New research by the SAP News Center noted that an overwhelming majority of U.S. consumers, or about 67%, said they think product shortages are 
the new normal, two words we've all heard over and over again by now. Moreover, a whopping 74% of respondents said they believe shortages will continue through 2023. Their top concern was the supply of food, which was mentioned by 77% of those surveyed. Over half, or nearly 52%, expressed concern about the availability of cleaning and personal hygiene products. And 35% said they're worried about being unable to get prescription medications in the coming months. As food inventories dwindle, prices rise for at least two reasons. Firstly, because lower-priced products are mainly sold out, which forces consumers to purchase higher-priced alternatives, also known as the product substitution effect. Secondly, sellers often capitalize on the imbalance of supply and demand and boost prices. Soaring energy and transportation costs impact many sectors of the supply chain, food included. Trucking is the primary mode of transportation for food products, and the industry is dealing with a worsening shortage of drivers and record diesel prices. Another factor contributing to this persistent rise is the worst outbreak of avian flu since 2015 that's still impacting commercial and backyard flocks in 29 states and and has already resulted in the depopulation of almost 40% of the nation's egg-laying chicken flocks, pushing egg prices to skyrocket 38% in August. According to Tyson Food CEO, the rush to hoard food supplies will keep creating imbalances all over the nation. Consumer demand will continue to outpace retailers' ability to supply products, Donny King said during a quarterly earnings call. If Americans are right and this is the new normal, then we're rapidly moving toward a disastrous scenario for our food supply chains. The truth is that people are finally waking up to the fact that our systems are failing in thousands of different ways all around us. As the winter approaches, store shelves are just going to continue to get bearer. Even the Fed is admitting that things will get worse before they get better. But will they get better? They can call it hoarding if they want, but it's a matter of common sense. If we know things are going to get uglier over the next few weeks, it's only human to want to prepare in advance. That's why we strongly encourage our audience to go out and purchase the things that they're going to need before those products disappear from the stores entirely. We have now reached a critical turning point and things are going to be even more chaotic from this point forward. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy our content, we strongly recommend Seven Year Apocalypse, the latest book by the economist and financial expert Michael Snyder. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the bell to always get our notifications and to share this message with friends and family.